Hello, and welcome to my first video blog. I'm going to start doing videos because it's faster, writing takes me a long time, and you can actually get a lot more information, and I realized in a video than you can in, in writing. So um, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about where I'm at with things in general with my art and what I'm working on right now. And so to start with, this is my studio here in Oakland. It's a nice, it's actually a bedroom, but I had nice lights, so I made it into my studio. Um, this is a east facing wall, and this is a north facing wall slash window. So it has really nice light in the morning, especially. Um, so I put prints of my paintings, some of my favorite paintings, these are <laughs> Edward Mucha. These are not mine. These three low, lower ones. <laughs> but these others are mine. To sort of like remind myself of where I've been and where I'm going. And so some of these things are very simple and some of them are more complex. I, I've been, I've written in a previous blog about my project of unifying my work into sort of one uniform style. And it's going to be something, you know, in between these and that's that's my purpose of having these up here is just to sort of look at things and remind myself of what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, so here's my living room. I've got some of my paintings hanging up here. Um, this is an old painting. I mean, this is like 10 years old. Uh, um, it's very, it's more traditional, more, it's tighter than I'm planning to go. This is a, also an old painting that I started in Salt Lake five years ago or so and I'm at some point I'm going to change those figures in the back and so so I'll have to take it out of the frame obviously to do that um, here's some Bruegel prints I love I love the texture of the old masters it's a little hard to see here because of the reflection but uh, one thing I like about the old masters is in, that worked in particularly in this style like the 1500s is the transparent underpainting um, and I, I've been using that more and more in my own work I, it's just a beautiful effect they probably did it partly because paints were very expensive um, back then and uh, they, they couldn't afford to use lots of thick paint like we started doing after the impressionists when paint came in tubes here's my most recent paintings basically and this is my most recent large painting. I finished this a couple months ago. The face was, it's intended to be my daughter's when they like, how I imagine they will look when they're 18 or so. It's intended to be like a universal theme. So this, this is like the fool, which represents the beginning of a journey. And this is the death card, which doesn't literally mean death necessarily. It could, it could mean like an accident. Um, and then this is uh, the phoenix, which is, like um, the, uh, rebirth after you know after an, an accident, and so it's like in our lives we have we have uh, challenges or difficulties or things happen, and we you know we we sort of re we learn from these things and are reborn. So it's intended to be a universal experience, represent a universal experience. It's called the path, and so it's like the path of life. <laughs> Spelling that one out. Um, and uh, this painting is it's closest probably to the style I imagine as far as the level of realism and stylization that I'm going to be doing. Um, this painting here is based on one of my daughter's painting and I did a short blog post about that but I really like children's art. It's very direct and simple and honest the way they express themselves. Um, and this one is based on a drawing that I did with my uh, other daughter, with Annika. And, but we did it together, so it's, but the face was her uh, drawing, the face of this dog. And, and it, it was just, a, it was a pen and ink drawing, and I just made it into a painting. Um, I finished painting, some, some portraits by my daughters. <laughs> this is the kitchen, basically. Some more little paintings by my daughters. And I've been looking at 
contemporary art, that's something I've always sort of avoided in the past, but so for example, um, David Hockney, and, and I really like, one thing I like about contemporary art is that it's so unplanned, it's very free. I, I love the freeness, so, you know, he didn't transfer a drawing down to do this painting. He just started working and just adding things in. And I really like that. And I just was noticing when I laid, opened this book that they're in the in the book there, they have this Fra Angelico painting and another Italian artist. This one's really famous. I love this painting. I see that it's called The Annunciation, but it's very famous. Um, but they're trying to, like, the writers and curators try to connect, you know, these contemporary artists to the painting tradition, but they really broke from the tradition because this kind of painting is very pre-planned. It's a, this, he did a very detailed drawing and then he somehow transferred that drawing down and then did the painting. Whereas this painting is not at all pre-planned. He just did it as, as he went along. And, I, and uh, so that's a very free process and I, that appeals to me and I'm sort of going to be, going to be exploring that more. Um, but I like this rainbow that starts inside the house and then goes outside the house and it's just completely random. And and then the idea of putting this sculpture right behind her face, which would normally be considered a kind of a tangent in uh, traditional paintings, something he wouldn't do. So there's just very unexpected how he puts things together. So this, this is my favorite of his paintings that I've seen. But... Uh, uh, and then here's two other artists in the contemporary tradition. Um, this one guy, Roy de Forest, he here, was here in Oakland. He died a few years back. Um, but I, also very free and unplanned. And then this guy, Galen Hansen, who it turns out was born in Utah, like Cache Valley, but then moved around. And these guys were part of this California school of art called the Funk, funk Movement. <laughs> but it's a contemporary art movement, but also all you know, unplanned paintings, very free and spontaneous in the approach. And then I have you know this Rousseau up. I love Rousseau. Also, probably didn't transfer his drawings down. Um, but so anyway, I'm on that in that process of unifying my paintings. But I applied for the Utah Arts Festival, <laughs> and I need to do some paintings. For that and I have a, a, a bunch of paintings that I've been um, had lined up that I'm had been looking forward to do kind of small paintings but um, I did this maybe six months ago and I'm gonna do another kind of frog painting so I have this this is the underpainting for it um, and then I have this drawing I, I you know the way I work I transferred this drawing down and uh, I, first I transferred this to like the lily pad, the background. So this is the background of the painting. And um, after I, I'm gonna put the, the leaves, I usually work light out of dark. So the leaves, I'm gonna build up like these leaves back here. Uh, and then after I've done that, I will transfer this drawing down, the frogs this time. I'll transfer the, the subject, you know, the, the subject down on, top of uh, the, the background. The reason for doing that is that it's very hard to paint a background like this around a subject. So you, the traditional thing to do and is to paint the background first and then paint the subject on top of it, which is, uh, it's a lot easier. And so that's what I'm in the process. And these are these little box paintings. Travis Tanner in Salt Lake City, the framer, um, Highly, I highly recommend his framing, by the way. <laughs> a shout out to Travis. But he made these boxes by taking, a long time ago, they're like 15 years old, by taking a frame and putting, putting the frame sideways instead of flat, how it should normally be, and that creates this kind of box out of, out of frame molding. And then I put these magnets in. This is kind of a craft project. I'm not gonna be doing any more of these. Um, I'm just focusing on painting, but since I have them, I'm finally 
finishing and so, so then the painting fits on like this so it creates this kind of secret box <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna I'm just doing a few more of these I'll have them at the arts festival so this is like the traditional way of painting is like paintings before say the impressionists or whatever certainly back in the renaissance they did like a they called it a cartoon back then but it was like a drawing that they transferred down and that's how representational painters working in that tradition work today too they transfer their drawings down so um but i'm going to be exploring doing less of that after the arts festival after i finish this so this is my computer this is this is adobe bridge and i i just i kind of like organize my latest this this file is my next paintings basically i may do this painting of based on uh, my daughters i was thinking to do this large and i may still do that these these are my daughter's drawings this is just something i did in photoshop a rough drawing i may do some pet portraits and but this is this frog thing this is the original drawing there so i took it from here i i took a picture of it so here it's here then i opened it in photoshop and this is a a Wacom tablet. This is like a computer screen that you can draw on with this pen. And it's very useful for drawing. It, there's, uh, like you can take, say, a, just a hand and uh, enlarge the hand, which without drawing software would take hours, you know, and maybe an hour to do. And, and here you can do it in just seconds. So anyway, it's just a useful tool. So I I took this drawing to uh, Photoshop, used Photoshop on my Wacom tablet and refined the drawing. Um, I, I, I liked the expression of this drawing, but I, I, the legs are like really unresolved here. So I, I also used my mannequin here to get the kind of the swoon of the frog. Anyway, so this drawing is with the, the legs are more resolved and the hands are more resolved. And, so, um, and that's about it. That's what I'm working on now, and that's where I'm at with things. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. And I'll have another one sometime soon.